See how you see that kind of charcoal in the cake? It's just that little. <laughs> Assuming you're Alfred. Master Kent. He said you'd come. Now let's hope you're not too late. The bell's already been rung. And they've heard it. Out in the dark, among the stars. Mm. Ding dong, the god is dead. Happy Comic-Con week, everyone. This is going to be my new Justice League Snyder Cut video. Zack Snyder just dropped another teaser for the movie, so we'll break it down. There's a bunch of Easter eggs and a bunch of stuff during the Justice League Snyder Cut panel that he revealed about the movie. There's going to be a bunch more Comic-Con trailers this week, so be sure to subscribe to get all those videos. We'll do a new Amazon giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and let me know what you want to see in the Snyder Cut. If you're not sure where this came from, there was a special convention called Justice Con organized by a bunch of fans this week. They did this special Zack Snyder panel because the in real life Comic Con got canceled because of the virus. So just starting with the footage first, you may have seen a version of this deleted scene. Like I sort of cobbled it together. There's a version with Superman in the black suit. Like that's obviously what he meant to show off. This is what he's going to look like in the actual black suit. But he actually said that what happened is, is the version that you see with him in the red blue suit is something that they did after the movie had been released theatrically. They just had a bunch of Snyder footage that they hadn't released yet. They said, okay, why don't we just polish this and post it online? So that's how this full version of the scene wound up online a couple years ago. This has been around for a while, but obviously the black suit version of this meeting is the one that we'll see during the Snyder cut. The scene itself actually happens later in the movie. It's after Superman has fully come back to his senses and the reason why he's wearing the black suit is one, Zack Snyder said, because his red blue suit had been destroyed in Batman v Superman, there was that giant spike through it. So he made a bunch of jokes about the red blue suit during the theatrical cut, like, well, hey, it's a Kryptonian suit. Maybe it can repair itself, you know, Kryptonian technology. You also probably remember this other deleted scene with Superman actually going to his Fortress of Solitude, the Kryptonian ship, to get the black suit, where you see the Warframe suit. You also see a couple other suits in here. But he says the main reason why he's wearing the black suit is because that's the first one he would pick when he came back, but also practically because that red-blue suit had been destroyed. Even though it wasn't a big surprise, he did say that he actually had to fight the studio to get the black suit in the movie. So when they filmed it, they had to film it really special so that they could tune the suit to be more black in post-production, hoping that he would eventually convince the studio to let him use the black suit. So when he comes to see Alfred here, this is when the rest of the team, Batman, Wonder Woman, Cyborg, Aquaman, have already gone to fight Steppenwolf. So Superman is going to join them, but he's coming to see Alfred to find out what's going on first. While they were playing this, a lot of people were also asking about Green Lantern and about Martian Manhunter. So Zack Snyder did talk a lot about them in the movie without giving away really big spoilers, but he did confirm a couple things. He did confirm that there is a version of Green Lantern during the movie. There's a couple of scenes that we know about from the original Snyder Cut. He also talked about the origin of the Snyder Cut too. He said right now what they're doing is, is they're restoring his assembly cut. Like he says in this tweet here, the assembly cut was originally five hours long. That was completed in February of 2017. That super long version of the cut. So there weren't many special effects that had been finished yet. There was a lot of green screen, a lot of cyborg walking around in his pajamas. Then as he was cutting it down, he was forced to leave the movie under those unfortunate circumstances. Joss Whedon came on and they did the theatrical cut. So what he did is, is when they greenlit the actual Snyder cut and started giving him money to work on it, he just went back to that original five hour assembly cut and they're working from that version of the movie. When it actually comes to Green Lantern though, it does sound like there's a version of Hal Jordan during the movie. We don't know exactly what he'll be doing during the Snyder Cut because the actual Green Lantern scenes that we know about don't involve Hal Jordan himself as Green Lantern. There are actually other versions of Green Lanterns. 
There are a couple claims about what's happening in the dark side flashback scene. He also talked a little bit about dark side during the movie too, so I'll explain that in a second. But there's some conflicting reports that Yalan Gurr, who's the Green Lantern in the theatrical cut, wasn't actually something that Zack Snyder did, and there were other Green Lantern things happening during this scene. Yalan Gurr was just one of the original Green Lanterns from a couple thousand years ago in the space sector that Earth belongs to. But in present day, the actual big Green Lantern scene was supposed to be one of the original post credit scenes where two Green Lanterns, Kilowog and Tomar Ray, show up to Batman at his lakeside house here. Presumably they were going to talk to him about the threat of Darkseid and that was going to push them into a more cosmic story during the second Justice League film. That was still when they were doing two Justice League films. So there wasn't supposed to be a ton of Green Lantern core during the first movie, but some Green Lantern core and way more during the second movie. And that was going to sort of spin them up into the Green Lantern core movie that would have happened after Justice League 2. No joke, if you remember the original schedule, there was supposed to be a Green Lantern Corps movie that they released in 2020, but that was before they made all those big changes to the DC movie roster. Because Zack Snyder is the person that cast Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman, who then went on to become Wonder Woman in the Wonder Woman solo movie, Wonder Woman 1984, my assumption is that the Hal Jordan that Zack Snyder would have cast for one of the Justice League movies would have gone on to be the Hal Jordan of the full-blown Green Lantern Corps spin-off movie. They're still planning on making a Green Lantern Corps movie, but obviously it's going to be a different actor now. A lot of people have asked what's going to happen going forward with the Snyder Cut. If it's successful, I don't think it's going to change a lot about their future movie plans. I think they'll just release more extended cuts of movies. They'll be more open to doing stuff like that on HBO Max. The way Zack Snyder talked about it recently is he said he views the Snyder Cut itself as sort of the self-contained universe like the Snyderverse is what he called it. His films including Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, and now the Justice League Snyder Cut sort of standing on their own in their own little bubble of the DC movies. I know I also mentioned Martian Manhunter. During the panel, Zack Snyder also talked a little bit about Harry Lennox's version of Martian Manhunter. So a while ago he posted on Vero all these storyboards of him becoming Martian Manhunter. I don't know if it started out that way in Man of Steel, if he always intended for him to become a version of that character. It might have started out as a fan thing that then he incorporated into future movies and was going to pay off during Justice League. But during the panel, when people were talking about him posting this Martian Manhunter Harry Lennox stuff, he didn't deny anything. He just said, yep, yep, Martian Manhunter, shaking his head. So I just take that as sort of a subtle confirmation that we'll find some sort of reveal during the Justice League Snyder Cut. I don't know if that means full-blown Martian Manhunter on screen, or if it's just Harry Lennox himself speaking to the Justice League characters, revealing himself as another alien from outer space. I think the whole idea with the Snyder Cut is that they were going to tease more cosmic stories, they were going to get way bigger with the DC Universe because you were heading into Darkseid, New Gods territory. They are making a New Gods movie, but it's a completely different group of people that's making that. So whoever their version of Darkseid is going to be, their version of the New Gods, they'll be different from the stuff that we see during the Snyder Cut. He talked a little bit about his version of Steppenwolf just being way scarier, way more hardcore and badass. If you remember the deleted scene of Batman v Superman with Lex Luthor inside the Kryptonian ship learning about Steppenwolf, the mother boxes, this is basically what Steppenwolf looks like. And this is actually better concept art too, gives you a better idea. He also made some jokes about Darkseid. So obviously he released that other teaser trailer with Wonder Woman in the Darkseid flashback scene. During that scene, he's actually Uxus. He hasn't become Darkseid yet. He hasn't taken that name. The reason why he needs to use a weapon is because he doesn't have the Omega Force. He doesn't have his Omega Beams, his traditional power that you see in all the other movies that he appears during. Zack Snyder made a bunch of jokes about how hard it was to pronounce some of the names because there's no real guide in the comics and not wanting to get it wrong. So for that very funny reason, he said that he made sure that none of the characters ever actually say that name out loud. Usually when they're talking about Darkseid, they just talk about Darkseid. Like when Wonder Woman is looking at this picture here, you actually see his name written in Greek, Darkseid. He said that they don't actually have the final title, but the idea is to call it Zack Snyder's Justice League, but apparently there are actually some really big legal issues with what they actually call the movie. The other really surprising thing was when he was talking about the format and how it's going to look physically different from the theatrical cut. So he broke out this aspect ratio explainer using a drawing that he did himself of Ben Affleck's Batman to explain how much extra footage you have in that true IMAX format. So he said that the Justice League Snyder Cut was originally filmed in that IMAX aspect ratio, so the theatrical cut that we saw, even the footage that they included that was Zack Snyder's footage, was all cropped. The other reference that he made was that teaser trailer that he released a little while ago of the Wonder Woman dark side scene. So you have to imagine the whole movie looking like this, but there's so much extra visual information at the tops and bottoms of the frames. 
If there's any other clips or any footage that he drops before then, of course I'll do videos about it. But everyone just post all of your reactions in the comments below and let me know what other things you're hoping to see in the Snyder Cut. But for those of you asking, it will be a completely different movie, completely different story. So it's not like them just making a longer version of the theatrical cut. It'll be totally different. While you wait for everything, click here for all my other Justice League Snyder Cut trailers and click here for all my other Comic-Con trailer videos. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe. I'll see you guys tonight.